Okay, there are two things I want to cover in this video. Um, I know in my last video I pretty much made clear what my opinions are about the WWE draft. And probably you weren't expecting me to talk about um, the draft at all. But I do want to somewhat add on to what I said in the last video. Because there were some things that I thought about, well I just thought of, but I didn't say in the last video that I probably should have talked about to an extent. Um, so that will, the discussion about the draft, the first topic of this video, will not necessarily be about the individual picks that they made, but rather about how the draft should be judged and how I will judge it, and basically just a few more things about um, the draft as a whole that were not discussed in the last video. So um, that will be the first topic of this video. And then later on I will talk about the ranking system that TNA introduced on Impact for their World Heavyweight Championship contenders um, because to me that is very interesting that is probably um, the more interesting thing that happened um, on these two Monday night shows that we, we got um, it, it'll all depend on what happens next for both in both situations it'll all depend on what happens next and what the long term impact will be which is probably what the basis of my draft discussion will be on the fact that um, these are both um, what, they, what have happened here um, could both work but it all depends on how they're handled, um, because the draft could work. The, the moves they made, um, they haven't put, dug themselves in a hole, at least not in my opinion. And the ranking system, um, it'll all, that'll definitely depend on how they um, handle that and whether or not they really take it um, as a decisive factor. But let's talk about the draft first. Um, you know, I expressed in my last video that I thought that the draft lacked speciality um, because... Um, the it was the brand extension was not respected enough, and when they had guys um, go from sh go from show to show, they did not really um, give concrete kayfabe reasons for doing so. And to me, there was nothing so groundbreaking on this draft. I didn't expect anything groundbreaking. You know, I don't think I don't think there's hardly any moves they could have made um, that would have been really groundbreaking. Maybe one or two, but they definitely weren't going to happen. But um, it doesn't feel like anything changes, you know, I guess a lot of that had to do with, because of last year, the fact that the Unified Tag Team Champions were, for a great portion of the year, Chris Jericho and the Big Show, and the, that, they were, that they were always involved in what were consistently the main focus of the WWE, which was the guest host, the guest host on Raw, and the fact that pretty much every week you had um, Jericho and Big Show involved in some sort of interaction with those guys you would often forget that they're smackdown superstars um well at least jericho is jericho being the stronger half of that group um so that was probably one of the main reasons why last year it felt that way but i probably should have mentioned that the fact that i i said that it doesn't feel like anything changes you know um if, if in a few months if in a few months either show has improved drastically because of the the moves that they made on this show then I will talk about it then, and I will talk about how the draft was a, was a success. Um, I'm not going to say whether the draft was a success or a failure right now, because that's for, the, for that very reason, because I have not seen what impact, if at all, it will have on the shows. You know, um, take MVP last year when he moved to Raw, we thought that was his year. We thought that was when he would um, break out as a main event star. Then they had him confront Orton, and that was wonderful, and then nothing happened. Um... No reason to believe that wouldn't happen again with Raw this year. Um, but um, the fact that I did not mention in the last video that I want to mention now, um, that sometimes they do manage to make changes for the better based on the moves that they made. Um, I can't believe I actually forgot to talk about this, the fact that SmackDown in the summer last year for a brief period got so good because of the moves that they made because the SmackDown roster was so pretty much perfect in every measure imaginable. And it definitely made a difference um, because the show while I guess carried by one feud um, everything else um, was good enough to make um, that one feud make Smackdown feel like this perfect show even though it wasn't exactly of course it wasn't perfect but um, everything came together in a respectable um, awesome way and if they can do that again then you know I have to give them credit for that, and that's what I will look out for. That's what I will look out for in the quality of the shows, whether or not they are good enough to where I could give them credit for the moves that they made in this draft. Now, granted, um, Kofi Kingston and Christian aren't exactly 
um, Jeff Hardy and CM Punk. And that's coming from a guy who doesn't like Jeff Hardy. I don't like Jeff Hardy, at least not as a main eventer. You know, I don't deny the fact that the guy was over. I don't, de I don't deny the fact that the guy was a cash cow. I just don't like him. And despite that, um, when he was feuding with Punk, um, I was into him because um, I just looked at him and said, wow, um, he's really coming along in this feud. And it's not just a matter of Punk, everything Punk touches turns to gold, because I have to give Hardy his due. He held his own in that, and I have to give him credit for that. Um, you know, Christian and Kofi aren't exactly those two guys. Um, you know, I like Christian um, for a start. I think the guy, not a, not, of course not a guy you can base your company around, but um, he's, a, he's a good transitionary main eventer, and he de deserves at least one world title to... Um, kind of go out on a high note. Um, Kofi is a guy who desperately, desperately needs some character development development for me to get into him again. You know, I was into him when he first started getting pushed, but it just deflated so quickly, it wasn't even funny. Um, you know, they took him from a guy who was a comfortable career mid-carder. You know, he had a gimmick that was at least entertaining enough where I could, um, where he could get airtime pretty much all the time and he could probably get a few mid-card titles. Then they took that away from him. They took the Jamaican gimmick away from him, and it was basically down to whether or not he could get a successful push. And if that wasn't going to happen, then he would go from a comfortable career mid carder to a guy who struggled to stay in the mid card. He was a mid card slash jobber, which is what, exactly what happened. Which is exactly what happened. Um, and if he's going to be anything more than that um, on SmackDown, they need to really do something with him. I'm going to say that right now. Um, but that's my final verdict on the draft. Long-term impact will judge the success of this um, of this draft. Um, now on to the TNA ranking system that they introduced on Impact. I have not seen Impact, so maybe they have sold it in a way that will um, influence um, what this will entail. Because I'm just going off descriptions um, based on a web page that I found. But um, it really is interesting to me that they have chosen to. I should probably explain what they're doing first. Um, I don't think the this will get much discussion because of the draft, but um, th apparently they're going to have um, the fans having influence on who gets TNA Championship matches um, based on the votes that they make in a poll. Um, and right now, this is very interesting, right now they have Desmond Wolf in the lead with 28% of the votes, and with Jeff Hardy in second place with 20 22%. And then in last place, this is very interesting, in last place um, they have Abyss. Yes, Abyss, the guy who they have struggled to make their top baby face for the last few months is in last place with, um, hold on, how many percent of the vote? He has, he has 3% of the vote in a poll that over, I'm going to say about 90,000 people have taken part in. He has 3% of the vote. Now is it a smart fan? Uh, fan base that is probably using this, you know, probably it, is. probably it is because it's TNA, and if they had more of a casual fan uh, stronghold, that they would have a lot more popularity than they have now. And I guess because a heel is in first place, you know, you have to expect it's probably more of a smart fan um, oriented um, poll, but it still represents a sample of the fan base. And to me, if they are going to um, take take this at face value and listen to the fans, that's probably something you can commend TNA for. You know, I mean, I don't think they can work these polls because they're not hosting them on their website. They're hosting them on a poll hosting website, um, polldaddy.com. So, you know, if they listen to the fans and they base, um, I, don't, I don't expect them to um, go right ahead. You know, if, if they're going to unveil the results of these polls uh, the night after every pay-per-view, so we're not going to see um, much progression on this until after Sacrifice, but if they... I don't, I don't expect them to necessarily um, reveal the results of this um, poll after Sacrifice and then instantly give the winner a TNA Championship match. But if they can actually um, do, something, do something with this that actually gives the fans some, some voice in what's going on, that's pretty commendable, I think. And, you know, I voted. I voted. Um, I put my voice out there, and I would encourage everyone else to do that as well. Um, just to see if we can get through to TNA a bit, because, you know, if they take these um, votes and don't do anything with them, then that's really is telling you something. Um, but they might, um, you know, it has to be, um, I would think it has to be um, taken advantage of and see, see if it makes any difference. And that's all for this video. I'm out. Later.